Rhino here. I'm here to tell you how we are going to do service on the CDJ 2000 Nexus. Now at the unit here, often the most commonly used buttons are the play and the cue buttons. These are used to kind of cue up and play tracks and DJs are hitting these all night. And over time, they can kind of start to wear out the mechanical portion of the switch underneath it. So I'm going to show you how to take it apart and replace the tacked switch underneath. So let's get started. A few tools that I find really helpful when doing this service, oops, I got it plugged in, is some sort of like soft foam material uh, to place the CDJ on, a soldering iron, and then a desoldering tool. This is kind of like a little vacuum pump with a soldering iron on the end of it. It is incredibly helpful. There's other versions of this tool that you can use. It's like a hand pump where you use a soldering iron and you kind of warm up the solder and use the pump. But I really recommend investing in one of these. Uh, and if you're gonna kind of take electronics repair consistently because um it just works so much better like i've used it a couple times now and i cannot believe how much more efficient this tool is and how much less time i'll spend kind of working to get a component off the board so i'll show you this in action in a little bit but let's get to the deck put the cdj upside down and there are five silver screws one two three i've already taken them out four five and then on the back side, there's black screws that have little arrows next to them. See that little arrow? That arrow often indicates kind of the necessity to take that panel off. So if I wanna take this panel off, I need to take that screw. You know, there's other screws visible, but since there's not an arrow, you don't need to take that screw out to take it apart. So in total, there's two black screws and five silver screws for the Nexus one and I find that, I think this is pretty similar on the Nexus 2. I've serviced those, but I don't have one right in front of me. When you get all the screws out, you wanna lay it on its top on your soft foam under underlayment, and you're going to open it like a book to the left side. Now, this might be hard to do with the camera, so I'll have to pause for a second. Okay, here we are. I have the camera rig now, so I can actually operate a little more easily. Um, so here I've got those seven screws out that I mentioned, you're gonna open it like a book, kind of on the left side. You've gotta open it this direction because this ribbon cable doesn't really work well if you open it the other way. So you see a lot of PCB boards. Here's your optical drive. If you wanna to get to some of the components, you have to take quite a bit out. But what's really nice about the play and the Q buttons is they're very accessible. And it's this PCB right here. If you ever forget, you can just look on the unit and see, oh, it's the bottom left corner. So it's the bottom right corner when it's flipped over. There's four silver screws. I've taken a few out already because I kind of started this and then thought, oh, this might make a helpful video because I've done this repair quite a bit. And I've often heard of many people needing this kind of service done, like the play and the cue buttons not working anymore. While I'm here, I love this tool. It's like an electric screwdriver so you can tighten and loosen things so quickly. And when you're doing a lot of screws, it's just, it makes you feel like you're really working quickly. So I like that. I always put my screws in a little container. I have some magnetic ones, but I'm using those right now for other projects. So I've got a little Frisbee. Of course I've got a Frisbee. And then there's also this LED right here. So we're gonna take out these two panels and this is so easy. I'm not even gonna disconnect these power connectors. I'm just gonna leave everything connected. And I'm focusing on these two switches right here. These are called tacked switches. Okay. The replacements come something like this. All right, so let me show you this desoldering tool in action. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn this thing on. I've got the desoldering tool warmed up but it's, it's actually, it's at temperature, but it's still kind of warming up the entire tip. It's a larger tip, so it takes a little bit longer to warm up. You can see here, it's, it's, it might be hard to see on the video, but it's pretty thick compared to like a standard iron. And then here's our PCB. 
and these are our tack switches. You know, they feel okay, but I can tell they're not as snappy as new ones. And the performer, the artist, kind of mentioned that these particular ones had been having a little consistency issue. So one thing you need when soldering is uh, flux. This flux kind of just helps with the whole process of soldering. It keeps oxygen from interfering with the metal. So it's really helpful to put flux anytime you're using uh, solder. So these are my two uh, kind of leads that I'm gonna be soldering off. I'm doing this one-handed, so I'm probably putting a little bit more than I might normally, but it's okay. It's not a terrible thing to have too much flux. It can't hurt anything. All right, so I put my flux on. This thing's still warming up, and I'll see what I can do to show you how this works. I'll kind of explain it first. So what you have here is this tip has a little hole in it, and when you pull this trigger, the vacuum pump enables. So this allows me to melt the solder, and while it's on there, I can just pull the vacuum, and it'll suck all the solder out. Okay, we're warmed up. Let's see how well I can do this one-handed. <laughs> Okay. You know, that's actually not too bad. All right, that's kind of how it generally looks and you can see the solder on that lead. Let me zoom in a little bit. Has already been, you can see it's kind of already been removed. I'm gonna work on it just a little bit more. Okay, I got those two leads about as clean as I can at this moment. I think that's good enough. You know, if you ever need to get more off, you can kind of work at it a little bit more. There's some other tools like soldering braid, desoldering braid. It's like a braid of copper that allows you to kind of suck up the solder, but I really like this kind of air vacuum tube. All right, so what I'm gonna use is a little plastic tool. Use something plastic and not metallic and I'm gonna use it to kind of pry these leads. They're kind of pressed against the sides here. And once I kind of pry those a little bit, this little switch will come right out. All right, got those switches out. You can see where they were. I'm not gonna lie, I find desoldering to be a little tricky um, compared to soldering. And um, it takes a little practice. That's part of the reason I invent, or invent, <laughs> part of the reason I picked up this tool because uh, using soldering braid or a manual sucker with an iron can be quite tricky and sometimes would take, you know, five minutes of me really working at it. Uh, sometimes using a manual pump like this one, I would find adding extra solder or adding a little low temperature solder, which helps with ease of melting and moving it off the board. All right, so I've got these new switches. I'm gonna put them in and solder them on. Okay, so this is what the switches look like. Sorry about the focus. Okay, very small with two little leads. Those leads will go through the board and then be soldered on the other side. So I'm going to insert it here I'm going to push it all the way down and then kind of bend each lead. Okay. And this is resin core solder. So it actually has resin or uh, flux in the solder itself. So I need to turn on my iron. I didn't have that warmed up yet. So we'll give that a second. Let's see how bad this angle is. Let's see if I can get it a little better. Let's move it over a little bit, that'll work. Okay, iron's warmed up. So all you do for this is, I've got some tip tinner. There are some tools you need. So the tinner kind of just keeps it, you could just use uh, just solder too. I just have the tinner right here. Or you could just touch a little solder to it when your iron warms up. Just make sure it's kind of hot. Make sure it's kind of on there. Use a little wet sponge, wipe the excess. So you just got a nice, clean, freshly tinned tip. Okay. You kind of hold the solder iron to the component for a second, and then you touch your solder to there. And there you go. You want to give it a second to let that kind of joint heat up because when the joint's heated, the solder flows on it much better. 
Like I said, since this is resin core, I don't have to use flux. Okay. All right. Let's see. Clean that up a little bit. Okay. All right. That's one. And we have our new switch installed. Now I'll just tighten up these leads and trim them. These little excess pieces of metal. Okay. So that's pretty much the whole process. I mean, I have to do the other switch and put it back together, but you kind of get a sense of how this will work. So being able to, you know, it's not that many screws and you don't have to take out any of the boards. So the play Q switch is a very approachable kind of repair. If you've got your own pair of CDJs and you find that these switches are going out and you're real bummed because sometimes it can be expensive to repair. Sure, I use some expensive tools here. Not crazy expensive, but you know, they're not nothing. So you can do this on your own with other tools, but you know, it's possible if you have uh, the capacity to, you know, if you do electronics, maybe consider uh, this approach. And if you don't want to mess with this, you can get a simple iron pump, solder and flux. And that whole setup could run you, you know, just the iron, these things in front of you, probably about 50 bucks. And you could do all the materials you need for the fundamentals of this repair. And then for a little bit more, you can get a desoldering station. This is an off-brand one from Amazon, um, less than $200. And I think it's a really good value for the quality of material that this helps me do. So thanks for watching the video, and I hope this helps you with your possible CDJ repair. Yeah, quick follow-up here. If you hold down, let's see, if you want to do diagnostic mode on the deck, what you do is you hold down tempo, memory, turn it on. It takes a second to warm up, so you hold those buttons. It will enter service mode, okay. You hit the tag, track, or move, and now you can test every button. So as I hit this button, you can see in every button here, I think if you hit, uh, what is it? Delete, yeah, delete lights up all the lights, but the thing I'm testing is Q. So I'm hitting play real fast. You can see it's very responsive. Q, very responsive, definitely wanna test it. And I feel like we're looking pretty good on this one.